it is here, the next episode of Fearless Theory, where I'll be teaching you how to become a fearless music theory expert. My name is Joe Valdez, and I am one of the teachers here at the San Jose Academy of Music, here in glorious, sunny San Jose, California. Let's get started, folks. Let us talk about our new topic called Note Values. Thus far, in the video series that we have called Fearless Theory. We have been talking about a concept called pitch. Everything we have been talking about. How to play the keys on the piano. What spaces and lines tell you what keys to press on the piano. The sharps, the flats, all of that refers to pitch. And pitch refers to the actual sound that you're hearing with your ears. However, Music is also organized in time. Anything that you try to read, as far as reading music is concerned, is going to tell you how long or how short you're going to be playing every single pitch throughout that song. And that is what this video is about. Note values. Note values tell you how long or how short you're going to have to play each and every single note in a piece of music. And so, without further ado, at the snap of my finger, Here's a score, and let's begin note values. Our first note value is called a whole note. As you can see, it is very simply in the shape of an egg. If it is not a fancy computerized whole note. This is worth four beats, and I'm going to play it for you right now. As you can see, you heard four beats, and that pitch was held for all four beats, because that is what the whole note requires. So when you see a pitch written like an egg, whole note, four beats, hold it for all four beats. Moving swiftly on, we have the half note. At this point, I'd like to tell you that the visual cues are your cues as to how long you're supposed to be playing a note. The visual cue between the whole note and the half note is the difference between the two. It is the stem. It's called the stem attached to the half note. That's the only thing, that line. Sometimes the half note is drawn like this. More on that later. And the half note is held for two beats. And it sounds like this. And so you heard four clicks, but you only heard the pitch for the duration of two, because you were only required to play a note for two beats if you see a pitch notated as a half note. Moving swiftly on, here is a quarter note. This thing is worth one beat, and the visual cue for you that it is a quarter note is that it is a half note, but this time that egg is shaded. Yeah, and so when you see the line with the shaded egg, or the black egg, whatever you want to call it, that is the cue that it is a quarter note, and you only hear it from one beat. And the quarter note sounds like this. And so you heard four clicks, but you only heard this thing for the duration of one click, or one beat. And that is what happens when you notate a pitch as a quarter note. At this point, I'd like to point out that we've been going in halves. The smaller note values are basically half of the previous value. If the whole note was four beats, the half note becomes two, and the quarter note becomes one. And now we're in single digit one, and we're going to cut that one beat even further into halves. And so the next note value is an eighth note. It is worth half a beat. Take note of the visual difference of the eighth note compared to the quarter note. 
it now not only has the shaded egg, it has that thing called a flag, sometimes called a tail. It doesn't matter which one, I use both terms interchangeably when I talk about eighth notes. And it is worth half a beat, and it sounds something like this. When you heard the first click, only half the time between the first click and the second click had elapsed when this note was finished playing. Because this is worth only half a beat. And that's what happens when you notate a pitch as an eighth note. Take note, these pitches can also be notated like this. Again, more on that later. Moving swiftly on, we have the 16th note. The 16th note looks like this. It is now an 8th note, but with two tails. That is the visual difference between the 8th note and the 16th note. And this is worth one quarter of a beat. And it sounds something like this. Ooh, that was quick. One quarter of a beat. Very, very small note value. These are very quick notes. When you see them one after another in succession, it usually kind of freaks me out because that means the piece is starting to get hard <laughs> because these are very fast notes. Uh, typically, when you see this note value, um, often it means the passage is fast and very often you won't see many note values that are smaller than this. They do exist though, but it doesn't happen often. Sometimes it looks like this. More on that later again. At this point, I'd like to point out that the smaller and smaller note values basically add flags or stems to them. So the eighth note has one flag, the sixteenth note has two flags, and you can cut the sixteenth note in half, believe it or not. And so we get into the smaller note values now. Sometimes you see this. It's called a 32nd note. Very, very small. It is one eighth of a beat. Dang, it's fast. <laughs> um, I get even more scared when I see this note value. And this note value sounds like this. Woo, that's fast, yeah? When I see a bunch of them, I freak out when I start reading the music. Three flags, very, very small as opposed to the 16th note's two flags. Yep. Sometimes notated like this. We'll get back to that. Let's get even smaller. Cutting the 32nd in half, we have the 64th note with four tails, and it sounds like this. <laughs> that is quick. Yep. There is your 64th note. It's got four tails. Mm -hmm. Just for fun, let's go ahead and cut that 64th note in half. You will typically not see 64ths in music, or even the next note value, which is the 128th note. <laughs> I just did it for fun. Also, it exists in this particular program, so I just... Well, heck, why not? You know? It's got five tails. Again, typically you will not see this in actual music, but theoretically, they can exist. And it sounds something like this. <coughs> Woo! That was quick. You barely heard it, even after the first click. And so there is your 128th note. <laughs> very, very small. And getting back to the way the notes can be notated like this sometimes, um, depending on where on the staff you position the notes, sometimes they will be notated with the stem facing down, yeah? And with the egg up top instead of like this, yeah? And let me show you what that looks like real quick on my computer. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. There you go. As you can see, these stems are facing down over here. These stems are way down on the left-hand part of the piano, the F clef, as we've learned in the past few episodes. And so that's why sometimes the stem would be facing down, or rather, prefer the egg is up top. And so, those are our note values. Getting smaller and smaller as we cut each note value in half. Whole note has four beats, half note has two beats, 
Quarter note has one beat, and now we're cutting that one beat further and further into smaller fractions. Eighth note is half a beat. Sixteenth note is a quarter of a beat. Thirty-second note is an eighth of a beat. Sixty-fourth note is a sixteenth of a beat. <laughs> and finally, the 128th note, <laughs> the ridiculously fast one, is one sixteenth of a beat. Yeah? Very cool! And without further ado, all of these notes in succession sound something like this. Finally, we get to the, the very quick 128th note. And those are the note values that you see in classical music. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Again, my name is Joe Valdez. I am a music teacher here in the San Jose Academy of Music. We are located in San Jose, California. If you ever happen to be here in San Jose or in the Bay Area or what not have you, and the surrounding areas around San Jose. Well, San Jose is pretty big. Um, I hope to see you around. You see that door behind me? That door, that door. I hope to see you going through that door one of these days, asking for a trial lesson with me or with the other teachers in this lovely, lovely school, the San Jose Academy of Music. This has been Fearless Theory 7. Until the next episode, remember to be quite fearless.